the construction industry change or how has it changed over the time the, like the pressures that men face has it changed or has it always been there you know no it's changed it's lot, an awful lot more pressure an awful lot of stress that guys are carrying today because number one of targets and no, we all know that companies need to make money and targets mm. need to be met but I believe that the companies are going around it the wrong way number one the crack is gone the crack is gone from the site you know and we live and thrive on the crack Everybody had a crack on site, but no, that's mm -hmm. after being stemmed. It's like the heart and soul has been dragged out a lot of men on sites today. And you can, I can blatantly see it, to be honest with you, because it's not so long ago since I, I, I finished up in the construction. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's right in my face every single day of the week, you know, mm -hmm. um, affecting guys in a detrimental way. I mean, let's put it this way. Statistically, a quarter of all construction uh, workers have thought of taking their own lives. Mm -hmm. A quarter. Every that, every four person like that mm. doesn't bear thinking about, you know. And I'd say, James, I'd say them figures are probably bigger, you know, because the industry is completely rampant with all, all forms of addiction, and like we all know what comes with addiction, poor mental health. Why why is it such a big like why is it so rampant with mental health and addiction? What, is it the pressures of meeting deadlines and the pressures put on the workers? I know people do long hours, sometimes six days of the week, sometimes even longer again. Mm. Is that, that the crux of it? Or? That's the crux of it, yeah, but there's, there's a lot of other factors, underlying factors, and some of those underlying factors are um, issues outside their workplace, and I think everybody will agree with that. I mean, pre-COVID, everything was going great, and then when COVID kicked in, and you rightly said yesterday, guys, um, Guys that were, were having a drink maybe on the weekend were now having drinks two or three times a day, mm. or a week, sorry, yeah. and then it would progress to maybe every night of the week. Now, alcohol is very cheap today to buy from the off-license and some of the supermarkets, and it's easily accessible. Mm. And, you know, you get into this state that you've put yourself into, and that's one thing that whoever's watching this podcast, you must take full responsibility for your actions and how you're feeling at this moment in your life mm -hmm. and you're the only person that can turn that around you can get help from everybody under the sun but if you don't step up to the plate and say you know something i see the error of my ways i take full responsibility and know i'm willing to change in order mm -hmm. to change my life only until then nothing's going to change mm -hmm. so like one of my favorite quotes and you've heard me say this before and whoever is watching it i'd like him to repeat it and that is if i always do what i've always done I will always get what I've always gotten. Mm. So what does that tell you? It tells you if you are doing the same thing all the time and you are getting the same results, albeit more than likely negative, then what do you have to do? Mm. Change what you're doing. Get a routine going. Be proactive in your mental health mm. and start to train your mental health on a daily basis and start that from the first time you open your eyes in the morning by getting a proper and serious routine going and stick with it. Doesn't it, it, isn't there a little bit of responsibility there so to the organisations within the construction industry, not just here, in, in England and everywhere else, <coughs> for them to educate the workforce a little bit first around addiction and mental health problems and well-being, isn't it? Like, a lot of guys, a lot of guys in the, in the construction industry may have no, no education, a lot of them mightn't even be able to read. You know, and, and it's not going to be very easy for these guys to get educated around feelings and emotions and thoughts right. and how, how everything works together. But why not educate the workforce and tell them, mm. show them how to, how to look out for, for, for problems and how, how to help them and to, to recover from all forms of addiction, mental health and mm. well-being problems, you mm. know. We, there needs to be something in place and we spoke about it yesterday, about maybe a safe pa pass, right, where there's a mental health education mm. integrated back into that safe pass. It's all about health and safety, yeah. right? How many people die in the Irish building sites a year? Four, five, right? Mm. The numbers have cut dramatically since they introduced that. If you look at how many guys take their own life within... I know. the construction industry on a yearly yeah. basis that is like we the numbers in this country aren't adequate because we have no resource on it and we spoke There's about no that research. yesterday the, the statistics aren't there and this is why I had to bring that up yesterday that um, 
two construction workers a day take their own lives in the UK. Two a day. Mm. That is affecting two families for the rest of their lives. 454 construction workers take their life a year in the UK. Mm. It's just, it's, it's heartbreaking. Yeah. It's, it's heartbreaking that one dead is enough, but 454 plus. I know we're going into the winter nights. Mm. And we all know what happens when those dark nights close in on us. Yeah. We think things are bad now, wait until the winter comes in. I mean, the construction worker, nobody, look, nobody looks at the construction with empathy or compassion. There's very few people that do. But the amount of years I had to get up out of bed at five and a half, five and six in the morning to go into a wet building site, you know, mm-hmm. plastering gable ends and stuff in the rain, piddling down on top of me and my other workmates and stuff and just getting through it, you know. And it's the same with all the masons and the chippies out there and everybody else that's working on the outside in construction today. They have all that to face in the coming months, you know. But nobody would, thinks about that. But yeah. the, the, the thing about that too is we're looked upon within society as well as the masculine workforce, the really tough men like the construction yeah. industry is made yeah. of really, really strong men. No, they may be physically strong, but a lot of men in the construction industry are mentally like, like they're, they're barely coping and, mm. and what keeps them from coping on a daily basis is the thought of maybe going into the pub for a few points at the end of the day yeah. until the following morning where they have to do it all again. There's so many men just like that. Mm. They finish at five, their routine is straight to the pub until ten, mm. get their food <coughs> on the way home, right, into bed, get up the next morning, that's it. Come Saturday and Sunday, they're in the pub, they're either drinking or using in the pub and gambling in all the bookies. Mm. The reason I'm saying this is because that was my life. Mm. That's the life I lived as well. And you know a lot of people still in it. Still, mm. you know, it's, and it's like, it's it's just a thing. It's just a thing that happens within the workforce. And do you think that there's more people in the construction workforce like that than in relation to other workforces? Like, you know, Say it's that again, really, James. It's, it's right across the board. I, I even got a text earlier on today from a chap um, in the haulage business. Yeah. He said, it's the same in the haulage business. So I texted him back. He said, something that needs to be addressed in the future, you know. I wonder, is it the tough working conditions? It's that as well. It? It's that as well. It's, it's lack of respect in a lot of lot of ways as well, you know. We, we can talk yeah. about the bullying as well that mm-hmm. goes on in sites later yeah. on for that matter, you know. So the, but I, like what you just said there... It's an industry where you don't really need to use your brain too much. There's not that much technology for, for construction workers, right? That like you do need to use your brain. You do, but not. It's, listen, not, it's not, a practical yeah, industry, yeah, yeah. okay? It's it's, it's just very a practical, path to the brain. and it's a way of learning, right? We learn in that industry through repetition, physically, yeah. okay, by looking at something practically and just knowing it off by heart, right? If if a lot of construction workers, if you brought them into a computer room. A lot of them wouldn't be able to sit there yeah. and, and go on a computer for, you know. Yeah. That's why we like to be kept going. We like to be working. We like to be up and down scaffolds. We like to be, like in my case, I like to be up on the roof, making a roof or inside, putting in a kitchen or fixing the stairs or whatever mm. it may be because it keeps my mind busy. Mm. And that's where it comes in for a lot of the guys as well in the industry. And, and it goes back to what we were speaking about COVID there earlier on about when COVID picked, came in and the whole country went into lockdown and there was over 200,000 construction workers were sent home from work one day, like, mm. and their yeah. routine was completely taken from James. A lot of them men need to be kept going, mm. right? And the pubs were closed also, so they were at home with their thoughts, mm. you know, bored. What do they do, Jor? Turn to substance, you know. know? It's a sense of relief. Mm. It's to stem the pain from not having that routine. And you spoke about that a while ago, about how you can get into into a routine. A routine starts off and then it becomes habitual. Mm. And then it's very difficult to break out of that habit. But the only way to move forward in life is to break yourself back out of that habit. And that comes down to training of, of mental strength again. And the mental strength, for me personally, going back, you're not aware of this, lads, but I wanted to take my own life going back a few years ago. And I suffered my own mental health and well-being. And I talk about this when I give talks to companies, but I'd been brought to a point in my life where I just had enough. Like, What age were you, Joe? It's going back when the downturn, 2008, 
2013. Go away. Yeah, yeah. Um, it was horrendous for me, personally, you know. There was no, there was no work there. Financial stress. Financial, yeah. Mm-hmm. Daughter going to college, mm-hmm. paying the mortgage. Um, everything got on top of me, but like any other man, I didn't open my mouth. Mm-hmm. You know, I kept my mouth closed because I was afraid in case... I'd be frowned upon, and this is where the stigma comes in, why guys don't speak today. Yeah. I'd encourage anybody out there that's going through a tough time to speak. I didn't speak about it. I, I don't know where I got the strength from, but that strength catapulted me to where I am today. Mm. What I do as a speaker, as an, as, as an energy therapist, helping me. Yeah. So I'm very grateful for the time that I did go through back then because it's made me who I am. Mm. And the first thing I'll say when I give a talk to somebody, I'll write on a board, remember these two words because I'm going to bring it up at the end mental strength.